what's up? Something a little different today. And in fact, that is the focus of today's video, using the Dirty Wave Mate to make the thing that you heard in the intro. And a surprising amount of it is made with the Dirty Wave Mate. So a bit of context, this started when I was staying at a friend's place and just kind of waiting for people to like get up and go about our day. And so I've been listening to a bunch of stuff by architects from their latest album. And I was like, I want to make something kind of like that. And so I just cranked out this little song idea, that initial riff and that initial breakdown idea. And by then it was time to put this away and go actually do stuff. And so I just left it, sat on the idea for a while, and then eventually exported those tracks, added more stuff, all on here, and then recorded guitars, programmed some drums, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to start off on the mate itself, and then we'll expand into real and real instruments. So here's what the initial pass sounds like just on the mate itself. little bit of a mess, but hopefully you get the idea. This is what I made sitting on my friend's couch. And uh, we go from there. So first of all, ultra, ultra simple little two bar riff with an ultra simple patch. This is the macro synth on the default morph preset. It's basically just like a soft square wave. So once I wrote that little riff, it was like, okay, I've got something to expand on. And once again, I knew that I was writing this for electric guitar. So the goal was always do the thing that a lot of metal core bands are doing right now and pair a buzzy saw bass with a distorted electric guitar. And in fact, I ended up exporting an octave down version. And that's the version that sits underneath the guitars, basically a complete replacement for a bass guitar. And it's just this deep hit that carries through quite well for our little syncopated breakdown. And in fact, a bit more context, I mentioned Architects. I was specifically kind of vibing on their song Deep Fake, but I thought the breakdown was just kind of dumb sounding. I was like, I could do better. It needs more syncopation. And so that's what this is. This is my little attempt to do a little better. It's still fairly basic, but when paired with this palm muted guitar, I think it goes pretty hard. Once again, we'll get back to the guitar in a second. So that's the core of our idea. Next up, just a little basic kick that I was using just to help me keep a pulse. And I use that in the intro as well. And that kick, by the way, is from my $5 sample pack. Link in the description. This little top line melody. So this is also the macro synth with a bit more going on. The saw square oscillator. And you will notice right off the bat, low pass is engaged. The cutoff is set pretty low. And in this case, the resonance isn't turned up at all. So if I go into my envelopes, I've got an envelope modulating my cutoff, giving us that little wow sound. And I've got an LFO modulating my timbre a little bit. And that's where we're getting that warble from. It's not a pitch warble, but the oscillator's timbre is being modulated slowly, giving this nice little shimmer. And I should also mention that I'm sending this very heavily to the chorus and reverb and a little bit to the delay. Let me show you what this sounds like without the chorus and without the reverb. That's doing a lot of heavy lifting in this case. Moving on, this little chaotic element. I think this actually goes such a long way for keeping the energy of this track, because especially in these more syncopated sections, the drums and palm muted guitars are going to end up doing this more kind of laid back groove, but then this is still driving it forward. And I think that push and pull that that introduces works really freaking well. So this is the wave synth, which is kind of like the little chip tuny synth. And this is the overflow oscillator. And you'll notice that I have the filter set to the wave low pass filter. That's different than your standard low pass filter. And if I go into my modulation sources, everything is being modulated. So I've got an envelope set to volume, turning this into just a short stabby little sound. And I've got an envelope sent to that cutoff for that wave low pass filter. And I've got both my LFOs running. 
giving the sound its evolution. And that just loops and goes throughout the entirety of the track. And then there's this little element, which I basically just buried in the mix. It sounds kind of weird, but I'll just go through it real quick. This is the FM synth with a weird envelope. Kind of a little odd element that doesn't really fit anywhere, but it is technically there. So that's the main skeleton of the track, but I knew I would want even more to create a bit more chaos and some more kind of glitchy elements, especially for a heavier breakdown. So I just did a save as of this project because I knew I wanted to take all of the original elements and just mess them up. And so that's exactly what we've done here. Check out how this sounds together. Uh, not great. So for our main riff, I swapped out the synth for a wave synth and I've just modulated everything conceivable. So we got size and mirror sent to the LFOs and then we've got warp sent to an envelope, which gives it that attack. And I didn't end up engaging the filter in this case. So that is a lot. I didn't end up using it for the main riff section, but for the breakdown, I ended up cherry picking little bits of it to feature just to add some more harmonic interest. This one's kind of fun. I don't think I ended up using this, but just so you know, it's a wave synth. And once again, LFOs are your friend here. And finally, for this project, we've got this element, which funnily enough is actually the same patch that I just showed you, but quite a bit lower. And I ended up taking this, cutting a bunch of lows, and then putting it in the background of the most low-tuned, intense part of the breakdown. So let's get into all of the tuning shenanigans that I have committed against guitars and all of that kind of stuff next. All right, so I want to preface this with two things. First, I am not a guitarist. I've played drums for a very long time, and I consider myself a producer first. I know enough very basic electric guitar to execute on some of my ideas. And secondly, I recorded the guitars on my Mac because there's less input latency. My audio interface is just perpetually connected to it. I use it to record all these videos. And for some reason right now, it just completely and utterly freaks out when I try to take screen capture footage. So I'm gonna provide you with some screenshots. As you can see, these takes have been comped to hell and back. Like I said, I'm not a guitarist. And I have gone in and pitched these guitar parts down using this free plugin. This is because the guitar that I bought secondhand from a friend doesn't handle getting tuned down too well. For some of those chugs, I tuned down to drop C, and I had a lot of trouble with the string being kind of flabby and not having the control I needed, and I'm already not great when it comes to precision in my guitar playing at the moment. We'll get there when we get there. Regardless, I ended up tuning it up to drop D sharp, and everything worked a lot better. Then I just pitched it back down three semitones, and we were good to go. And it actually sounds fine. And then after that, I am running Archetype Nolly as my amp sim of choice. This gets especially ridiculous for that end portion of the breakdown with that really low tuned section, in which case I've tuned it down three semitones with one instance of the plugin, and then I've stacked a full octave drop and then am once again running it through Archetype Nolly, and that's how you get that disgusting gusting dropped tuning, which I actually think sounds pretty sick. Regardless, we're back on my Windows PC. Here's what those guitars sound like in isolation. So you can definitely hear the playing's a little sloppy, but uh, we're gonna make do with what we've got. Plus. So then we layer that with that saw base. And the buzziness of that synth bass combined with the guitar just really works for me. And it's become pretty common in metalcore these days, so it obviously works for a lot of people. Underneath that, we've got our drums. <laughs> Th 
This is the uh, Periphery 4 kit, and it is absolutely freaking fantastic. A lot of periphery in this, if you couldn't tell. So some of these individual elements already have the turbo knob cranked. Then we add a tiny bit of OTT. A little bit of EQ. Add a parallel compressor. That sounds like a bit much by itself, but in context, it pokes out of the mix nicely. I have done nothing to this part, at least not by itself. I have a duplicate running through Infiltrator, doing this riser thing, just really increasing the intensity. Plus, <laughs> that element I said I buried in the mix, I made it sound even worse. Just adding to the chaos, like, let me mute the guitars. We get all this chaos that's controlled and it keeps the pulse, but it still increases like the tension and makes the drop feel a lot more intense. Got some processing on our main lead. Cutting lows. A little bit of super VHS. Spaced out. Bit more EQ. And then I'm also layering that with that high guitar part. And finally, in that last breakdown, I've got that sound layered in there. Once again, to increase like the intensity of the drop and then little cherry picked pieces of that kind of bit crushed uh, chip tuny synth. Just to punctuate certain moments. and finish with the iconic Gojira pick scrape. If you'd like to see a full kind of electro synth wave song being made on the Dirty Wave Mate, you can check this video out up over here. And if you'd like some more metal, I've got you covered with that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. Flippy McDippy is back in full force today.